Hello, I'm Earl and welcome to Speaking of Everything. I have a very interesting guest in the program for a long time. Haven't been in the program. We finally got him in the program. Good to have him on the program. Mr. Mike Granger, how are you doing, sir? Good. I'm doing good, Earl. How are you doing? Get uh, uh, great, man. Good to have you. After all these years, it's been a long, long time, man. A long time. Yeah. You've been involved with Carnival Development Foundation for a long time. You're now a director, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. I've been there since Carnival 2000. Yeah, so 2000, so 23, 23 years. 23 years now. Wow. Um, wrapping it up though, it's not going to be much longer. Yeah. Um, because you know, every now and then you got to move on and let others do their thing. But um, it's been a fun, challenging, uh. very challenging <laughs> 23 years. But um, the experience, yeah, I won't replace it for anything. But you guys are doing a great job, man. Thank I, you, thank you. Let me tell you, the St. Martin Carnival came from nowhere. And I'm telling people now, we're almost number one in the Caribbean. Almost. We like to refer to ourselves as um, the Trinidad of the North, uh, Northern Caribbean. We, that's what we aspire to become with Carnival. And um, we, we've, come a, we've, come a long, we've come a long way. And of course, that, you can't do that by yourself. Uh, you know, it, um, it's, it's cooperation of your stakeholders. It's cooperation of your, your volunteers, the business community, mm -hmm. the government. Um, so everybody have a role to play. In the growth of this festival, so in two decades, when I've been there, it's it's come, it's leaps and bounds to what it was. What amazes me is that when I travel through the Caribbean and I speak with people, mm -hmm. their eyes light up. Yeah. They're looking forward to St. Martin Carnival. They can't wait for it to happen. Yeah. That didn't used to happen before. No, St. Martin Carnival. It's a, It used to be, you know, a small mm -hmm. island festival. As we all know, we all grew up around with, with Carnival, in the village of. Um, mud and, and, and dirt and gravel. Um, so a lot of people miss those days. I still get nostalgic and miss those days too. Uh -huh. um, but once, um, I remember it was former minister Franklin Myers, when he was a minister and he determined, he said, look, Carnival is great, Carnival is, it will always be our, our, our local cultural festival, mm -hmm. um, but we need it to be more for the country. Um, so we want to export not so much more as in money making, but we want to export our culture, mm. first of all, expose it to the Caribbean and the rest of the world, and attract people to our shores. So once he, um, when he was Minister of Tourism, yeah. he increased the budget for Carnival, um, we, were, we had the ability then to get very creative in how we market the festival uh, throughout, the, throughout the region and the world. And since then, mm. man, it's people contact us from as far as Russia, Germany, really? Japan. Wow. When is the schedule coming out? What's on the schedule? Because they have to book their vacations, yeah. they have to book their tickets. And uh, the excitement, you just mentioned St. Martin Carnival, now we're in the Caribbean. The excitement is through the roof. It's amazing. I mean, I mean, we do have some of the most unique aspects here yeah, in the country. Yeah. So, but it's, it's always fun to, to get those reactions. And um, the subsidy, do you all still get the yeah. government subsidy? We have stopped requesting oh, government okay. subsidy. Uh, we believe that any, um, any self-respecting mm. foundation that has been operating for as long as we have, which is 53 years, at some point you have to um, become a little self-reliant. Okay. Um, uh, we, we encourage government to use our subsidy, you know, the subsidy we used to get, mm. to help others in Carnival, other stakeholders, because the Calypsonians need it. The troop leaders need the help, mm. pageants, boots, right. etc. So uh, two years ago, we recommended to government to come up with a plan, and we will sit with you if they, if they need, if need be, to to find a way to help these individual stakeholders of Carnival. The Carnival Foundation, we have our state, we have our corporate uh, partners, primarily the private sector, um, our income from season pass sales, etc. We have that, um, but. The pot is so small or all that. When we go digging in the pot, and then you have all of these other stakeholders come on to get some out of the same, it gets too mm. small, and the people don't get the help that they really need. So we say, okay, government, that subsidy, you could either give it, split them all to them, give us some, give them some, mm. whatever. But we, um, we won't be accepting or requesting your subsidy, but we prefer that our stakeholders get the assistance instead. You know, um, last year I had uh, King Timo, mm -hmm. and I had uh, King Bo on the program here, and, and I received a message from you, mm -hmm. and that was a message that you watch both programs, yes. and there were certain things that you didn't agree with. Yeah. Calypsonians always have an issue 
Yes. <laughs> that is true. Sometimes it's legitimate. Very Some, legit. Yeah, sometimes it's not, but I'd like you to, to re probably respond to that. The relationship between Carnival and Calypso has always been um, mm. a little back and alish, as I like to say. Um, but we have come a long way. Um, in fact, one of the Calypso I've learned the most from in my years in Carnival is King Bobo. I remember once I was on PJ2 speaking in the early days. Mm. And he called him, he said, well, you, 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 you just want conceited boy, eh? you conceited. <laughs> <laughs> so when, when, the, when King Bobo calls you conceited on live radio, you, you better stop and take notice. Mm. So I stopped and took notice. And ever since then, you know, we mm. communicate all the time. And, um, you know, they always, one thing with, with Bobo and people like Fish, they're always honest with you, straight yeah. to the point. There's no beating around the bush. And they have a lot of contention about how Calypso is organized. And, um, and carry it out. Mm -hmm. And we, we have to explain to them um, over the years that, look, Calypso is very important to Samaritan Carnival, but it also carries its own cost, a budget. It has to be right. treated accordingly. It just It's not because it's Calypso or a Queen Show means that it's free and it doesn't have a, a budget, etc. Right. So it's it's you have to explain to them very technically uh, what it consists of. It's not that we want to keep you guys out or don't want to pay you what it's worth, etc. Um, but it, we have to consider a budget primarily. That's always the contention, and uh, we have to consider what, how it falls in the carnival schedule. For example, for it to have a decent showing, mm. I'll give you an example. Over the years, they've always wanted the Calypso finals to be before Juve. For example, it can't. It's it doesn't work at all. Nobody's coming to the village before Juve morning to watch Calypso. Mm. You know, we've explained them that situation. But it used to be like that before, ones. right? It used to be. But things have changed. And um, when, the, when the show is is um, uh, running a major financial loss, the Carnival Foundation have to do what it has to do to right. remedy that. Okay, and that means moving it to a different night, come up with different uh, marketing um, strategies for it. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes they agree the Calypso, sometimes they don't agree. But we tend to come to always a, a compromise position with them. Um, now that they have the foundation as well, the, mm -hmm. the Caiso Foundation, it's even better because now we're talking to one group of people who represents the Calypsonians. Um, I won't say there won't be any um, contentious matters in the future, but we always knock it out. We always butt heads yeah. sometimes, but it, at the end of the day, it works for both parties. What about the um, local promoters from that? There's some issues there. Well, um, there's not, I wouldn't call it an issue. Mm. I think that the public uh, misunderstood what, what, what happened. Oh, okay. um, every year, the Carver Foundation opens registration in early June, every year. Everybody has to register for Carnival. Queens, boots, promoters, bands, everybody go online and oh, they register. In June, yeah? In wow, June. Wow. Yeah, we start in June with this. Um, this past June, we, we, we put out a call. It's an it's a expression of interest, we call it, mm -hmm. for all promoters. They're the first we deal with. Huh? The first group we deal with is promoters. So we put out a, um, a call for all interested promoters to register with the Carnival Foundation if they want to execute a night in Carnival for Carnival 2024. Um, the promoters in question at the public got a little upset about, which was um, uh, back at our Sunday Flag Fest in hit makers, they didn't apply for a night. You see, but the public didn't understand that they have to apply. Oh, okay. Because the public just see the, the schedule come out, they didn't see those three on the schedule, and the first thing they assume is the Carnival Foundation kicked them out. That, that, that's a cry that went out, the wow. Carnival Foundation kicked them out. We did no such thing, we just followed our regulations, and they didn't apply for the night. So others applied instead, mm. and by the time registration closed, they still didn't apply, and so you went ahead and you allot the nights to those who had registered. So after a while, the, um, the, the promoters came out and they explained to the public that it was entirely our choice. We, uh, we did not respond, um, register for a night. Yeah. And so the Carmel Foundation moved on. They even thanked the Carmel Foundation for giving the opportunity over the last eight, ten years. Now, these are promoters who have been with us for that amount of time. So people have gotten used to them in Carnival. So when they're not there now, it's like, oh, the world is ending, oh, this and that. Yeah. But it opens the door for something new. You never know what new people is going to come with, how creative they're going to yeah. be, how, what kind of energy they're going to inject into Carnival. Yeah. So uh, we're excited about 
to see what the new ones are going to do. It's kind of like it's kind of like when Clarence Derby steps aside, Coochie, mm-hmm. Sweet Leroy, these people from back in the day, uh, Leroy Richardson, you know, they, they, they moved on. So bring some fresh blood. Yeah, inside. and then the same three that we're talking about <laughs> yeah. moved in. Oh, okay. <laughs> you, know? you know, so now that these three has moved out, another three is going to move in, and that's the way Carnival is. It's continuous change. A lot of people feel that the international shows mm-hmm. are too many yeah. during Carnival. Yeah. Oh, how do you feel about that? We have on an annual basis five to six international shows and 12 to 15 local shows. Uh-huh. Okay, so the local shows always outnumber the mm-hmm. international shows. However, the international shows get the most attention. You see, they're, they're, they're marketed bigger um, and people really want to see these major artists that come here. And people come from the neighboring islands to see them. To see those artists. Yeah. They come from Europe and the US mm-hmm. to see these artists because those artists are the prices that they get them for here in St. Martin. Mm-hmm. You can't get those artists anywhere else in the world at that price. So they, they carry a heavy load um, for, the, for, the, for the festival, but the local shows always outnumber international shows every every year. Now the folks need to come out and support mm-hmm. those local shows now to the same level that they support the international shows. Is that happening? It is slowly <laughs> happening. <laughs> Let me just put it that way. I can't lie and say it, it's 100% happening. Mm-hmm. But with shows like Soka Rumble, for mm-hmm. example, which has been great for local music, yeah. people come out in full to support that show. Okay. We have a, upcoming this year, we have a Caribbean Queen pageant with, with girls from around the Caribbean, like how, like, how PJ2 used to do back in the day. Yeah. So we expect that to be big. So it, it's the local shows are, com- are coming around, but only because, too, mm-hmm. we've put a lot more emphasis on marketing them as big as the promoters do with the international shows. All right, in case you've just joined us, uh, this is Speaking of Our Thing, I'm Earl Gibbs. We're here with uh, Mr. Michael Granger, Director of St. Martin Carnival Development Foundation. We're speaking with him on Hot 99.9 FM Radio, Facebook, and YouTube. When we come back, we will continue speaking with him right here. Please do this. Hey, don't guess about your insurance. Be sure that you're covered. Like with your car, <sighs> like your home. Be sure to be covered in case of a fire, flood, hurricane, or some other natural disaster. And travel insurance, because you never know what could happen when you're on vacation. You could lose your passport, your luggage, or have an accident. So be sure that you're covered. Insure yourself fast and easy with Be Sure from the Wynwood Islands Bank Limited. Visit your preferred WIB branch, WIB Insurance Services, or BeSureStMartin.com. Get your Be Sure insurance at the Wynwood Islands Bank, your partners in progress. For real? Somebody came in here and steal my curtains? Well, it's a good thing I'm insured with Be Sure, because even the contents of my apartment are covered. Don't play guessing games with your insurance. Be sure. Are you Be Sure? Be sure. My guest here on uh, Speaking of Everything on Hot 99.9 FM Radio Facebook and YouTube is Mr. Michael Granger, been with the Carnival Development Foundation for 23 years. He's director. It's great to have him on the program. And as I say, when things go bad, they blame him. <laughs> <laughs> when things are good, they, they praise me. <laughs> it's true. Cool to that is true. <laughs> Um, why is that? Why, why is that? Oh my God! I, <laughs> I have been. Um, I always joke with people and I say, you know, before I went into Carnival, I had so many friends. Uh-huh. <laughs> you still got a lot of friends. But, <laughs> but Carnival boy takes a toll. You know, um, Carl Arndell, tall boy, mm-hmm. late tall boy. He was he was president, and he used to come up in the office and speak to me all the time, give me advice and stuff like uh-huh. that. He said, "Boy, you know, Mike, I never went back into Carnival for one reason." I could not deal with the people <laughs> and every little thing that they throw at you. Yeah. And he said, God bless you. Um, I don't know. I mean, the things a lot of people don't understand that I am one person on a board of nine people. Yeah, but you like the face of it. And they call me that. They, you know, mm. you say you're the face of man while you're this and that. I, but I want to explain to the folks, I really need to explain that the Carmel Foundation is a, founda- and a legally established foundation mm. with a legally established board nine people um that board meets we vote they take decisions yeah even if that even if my opinion or if i if i disagree with the board yeah. in public i go out and i defend the board's position i'm not gonna go out in public and say the board make this decision but you know what i didn't agree with it 
So I, I <laughs> just want to point, you know, I didn't agree with it. Yeah. I would never say that. So, but I am the person who's always mostly speaking mm. and who's always sending letters to government and to whomever. It all comes from, from me. So people, when something goes wrong, it's always me. <laughs> you know, it's all, I'm the name. It's, you, know, you never hear the board of the mm. Carmel Foundation did this. Yeah. It's my Granger did it. You know, and I've come to accept that over the years. Um, but I just want people to, to understand that it is never me making one decision it's by a whole myself. Group. A whole it's board. a group of nine people, folks. <laughs> okay. It, you know the funny part? Nobody knows who these nine people are. They may know Alston, who is president. Yeah. Rajuki, who is president now. But ask them to name somebody else. They can't tell you because they never see them. But mm -hmm. these are the board members of Kamba Foundation are such hardworking volunteers. We're all yeah. volunteers. That's another thing. People think we get paid. We're all volunteers. Um, they're hardworking. They prefer to stay in the back. Yeah. And they prefer to let Mike and whoever go up front and do what, and do what they have to do. Another reason I think overall is because people always see me around in the village because I'm a perfectionist. Mm -hmm. I'm a Taurus and a, and a perfectionist. So that's a bad combination. Um, <laughs> So I'm always around because I like to make sure everything runs properly. Yeah. So I would spend sometimes 12, 14 hours in the village just there making sure all the T's are crossed and, and, and the I's are dotted and every little detail yeah. so people assume everything. But, I mean, you come to deal with it, you come to accept it. Yeah, and, and the schedule for 2024 yes, came beautiful. out very early. Yes. Uh, actually, it came out late. Late? Yeah. Everybody usually, was excited. To, yeah. yeah. We usually yeah. Uh, we announce the dates. For the following carnival at the mm. end of carnival, so right. maybe on other dates, and then the schedule is usually out in September. We were late this year; it came out in October, um, but it's a beautiful schedule. Yeah, uh, we have a lot of new things on the schedule, as mentioned before, because a lot of new promoters. We have new local shows as well. Um, it's eighteen to twenty days of carnival, with a, a few more days of pre-carnival events. So if you put everything together, thirty days a month right. of carnival activities. And uh, we're, we're so excited about this, this, this schedule and the contact we've been, we've been having with so much people from across the world. Um, so we're, we're, we're very excited. And people we think is going to fall in love uh, with mm -hmm. the, new, the new items in Carnival. It's amazing how you guys uh, do that. I mean, it's, it's a party for the entire island. Yeah, it, uh, we, we make sure that there's something for everyone. Yeah. That's for sure. Um, people who felt that Carnival was never for them. There's a group of people on someone who felt Carnival was never for them. It's only mm. for the locals. Yeah. Are uh, now storming into the village um, every year. Um, Carnival Village itself is still unique in the entire Caribbean. We have folks that come from Trinidad and they tell us all the time, man, you guys have a jewel in this Carnival Village because mm. in Trinidad, you know, their events are all over. Right. Carnival Village is where everything is held. It is the heart and soul of St. Martin Carnival, mm. the biggest outdoor restaurant in the world. <laughs> and, um, oh, yeah. it's, it's a music festival, it's a food festival, it's a cultural festival, it's a place where people come together. I mean, the village makes it work for, for everyone. And uh, we start, as soon as Carnival is over, we start and we keep going. It's year round, we just keep going and getting it done. So the, the village is managed by you all? Or, or no, we wish. Uh, that is something we desperately want. Mm. Uh, the, the village is still a government um, facility managed by a government foundation, um, SOK. Um, but we have, for the last 10 years or so, requested to at least have an opportunity mm. to manage the village because we have our vision of what the village can be yeah. instead of what it is now. I mean, we have a vision of a, of a carnival mu uh, museum established in there that can attract students, tourists, everyone. We have a vision of a carnival library um, uh, where, where students can come and, and, and get more um, information about mm -hmm. the largest cultural festival that brings people together. We have so many different ideas of what that village can be. And uh, we've never been able to, to successfully convince a government, not just this government, um, to do that, to take that step. We won't give up those efforts, um, but um, no, it is not managed by us. We honestly, or we honestly, Pray and hope that one day it will be. What do you think that people need to know about St. Martin Carnival that they don't know? <laughs> that it has a cost. <laughs> it is not, it it's is not, not cheap. <laughs> it is not cheap. It is not free. Uh -huh. um, costs have increased um, a tenfold almost, mm. especially since the pandemic. The pandemic has had a really, really hard. Really? It hit us really hard. We're still recovering from that. 
Um, cause, or you have to understand, a lot of people don't get that. We are not a business. We don't have daily income. Our income comes in in a short window between December, when our sponsors started to yeah. give us money, to April. And that's when we actually can function. Other than that, um, there's no other time we can raise money to fund a budget of almost $1.2 million. That's our annual budget. And to be very honest, we never fund that 100%. We always come close, but not quite. Mm. So we have a lot of our um, service providers that work with us, mm. well, work with us up until the pandemic, I should say, yeah. and carrying over some costs. But the pandemic changed that because these folks had to stay in business as well. So everyone came knocking on the door for their money that um, we tend to always roll over to the following year. Yeah. So it is our business strategy had to change completely. Um, it is very, very difficult that's what folks need to know it's very difficult to stage um this festival every year extremely expensive and uh with a budget of 1.2 million it is a challenge Do dollars dollars yeah. 1.2 million dollars it is a challenge for the carnival foundation every year so you run the deficit the we budget? run deficit every year yeah i can't pretend um we haven't seen black i think <laughs> in 30 years mm -hmm. um but we always manage to pull it off yeah uh, due to the cooperation of folks who know um, some of them who know how hard we have it and who know also that they're going to have work the following year. Right. So let me just work with Carnival to make sure it's, it's pulled off. Uh, we are proud that for 30 something consecutive years we've been able to do it without interruption. The COVID was the only interruption Carnival has ever had and um, unfortunately we are still recovering from that and dealing with those challenges. I think this is my opinion. Joby Morning in Sim Raden is, is the best biggest in the, in the Caribbean. Best in the world. That's right. Caribbean. <laughs> the world. <laughs> the world. Uh, that is what most people fly in for, huh? Most people come in a day before Juve, two days before Juve, yeah. and then they go on the day after. Really? It is wow. amazing. It is 20,000 plus people on the road. Yeah. Um, it, there's no Juve in the Caribbean can compare to it. None. Um, and, and just the, you got 17 to 18 trucks, band trucks. Mm -hmm. You see, the band truck culture is also something that St. Martin is keeping alive. Um, because in Trinidad, for example, you have band trucks, but you have DJs on those trucks. There are barely any band, any live bands okay. on the road in Trinidad anymore. St. Martin have it, Aruba still has it. Um, but we are trying to keep that live band culture alive. And with Juve, mm -hmm. I mean, or people has come out of the woodworks. You wonder where all these people are coming from for, <laughs> for Juve, but it is really a special mm -hmm. event. Let me ask you the second day parade. Labor Day parade. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Any plans to change that? Because people who are not aware of it sometimes mm -hmm. say, well, the day before was looking great. Yeah. And then the next day. It's, it's pure confusion. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we, like all, we kind of call it organized confusion. <laughs> uh -huh. uh, the next day is the day when revelers tend to. Um, go a little overboard. <laughs> Sometimes forget that they have uh -huh. a, um, costumes um, and, 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 and just go do what they want. That's mm -hmm. a, almost a tradition of the second day parade. Before the pandemic, we had plans to change that into a lighted parade. Oh. So we'll have the first day parade as normal. In the second day parade, we're going to put lights on the costumes and then start a little later in the day. Mm -hmm. in, when the night twelve comes, it'll be beautiful yeah. lights. We have still have not been able to execute that, um, so we're still doing the norm right now. Mm. And um, but yeah, it it catches some, some tours, especially <laughs> off guard, yeah. because they see some this, this spectacle the first day. The next day is like what the heck? <laughs> you know, so the next day is is is, um, is is an acquired taste. Let's oh. just say. <laughs> Another thing is that um, the women. Yeah. And beautiful bikini. Look, I'll tell you. Yeah. Honestly, for me, it's not a problem. Mm -hmm. I love to see it. I have mm -hmm. no problem with it at all. Yeah. And I'm not going to complain about it. Right. But there are people who are complaining about it. Yes. How you feel about it? People complain about it every year, not just here. You see it growing throughout yeah. the Caribbean. Um, we started with an initiative last year where we asked troop leaders to at least have a section of your troop display cultural folkloric costumes at least a section, and we prefer the front section mm. to show some culture because the parade is coming now where you have very little culture in it. Um, we have to put a lot of our corporate sponsors in it, like the vehicles right. and stuff like that. Um, but the costume themselves, the sad part is, um, I want to see more creativity. 
I want to see more culture. That's me personally. Because the costumes now, you could barely tell from year to year which year that costume is from. That's because true. they start to look the same. <laughs> yep. You know, you can't tell if this is from 99 or, or uh -huh. 2010. Yeah. They're all the same. Bikinis and strings, bikinis and strings. You know, so um, we too, the most of the Carver Foundation, we feel that it needs to be, we need to see more creativity. We need to see more culture. Because there's so much you can do, but the, they're taking on the South American yeah. and the Trinidad style of Carver. But I don't think we need to tell them what to do. No. I think they should come from the south. Yeah. yeah. If they want to have a bikini, want a body paint, it's okay. It's carnival. It's once yeah. a year. I don't we don't mind some uh, some of it, or, yeah. of course, because it's very difficult to stop trends, and trends is that style, yeah. bikinis and feathers. Um, but we do have to put on our foot every now and then because you have um, young people in, in, in schools, for example, who do a lot of projects on our entire carnival. We don't want children depicting that that is part of our culture. It is not. We want more, to see more creativity, yeah. more cultural uh, aspects, more cultural portrayals of, um, of, um, of our life here in St. Martin. That's what we want to see. Yeah. Um, but there can be a mix, and there's no problem with the mix. But it just can't be bikinis and strings down the road the whole day. Let me tell you something. You go to church. You go to Catholic church mm -hmm. early morning. You know what you see in there? Only women. Yeah. Maybe one man or two. Yeah. But all women. You look at the carnival parade, great, the grand carnival, mostly women. 99.9% .9 women. What would carnival be without women? Yeah. Um, yeah, it'll be nothing without all women, but the women could put on a little bit more. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. I think it'll be a, I think it'll be a lot more. There'll be more women mm -hmm. if you add some clarity because there's people like... My mom's age and stuff. They would still like to chip and go down the road. But they could come in. They Not in a bikini and a string. No, but they so, so, the, so, the, so the troop leaders need to offer something <laughs> so my mom and others could chip down the road. When I see, when I see him, but I gotta tell her she gotta get the parade. Chipping down the road. <laughs> right. Anyway, Mr. Grigio, we, we out of time. Only have 30 seconds. It's all yours. Uh, we just want to encourage, um, on behalf of the Carnival Foundation and our hardworking volunteers, encourage everyone to come out and support Carnival, support our um, local shows primarily, mm. and um, all our local stakeholders. I want to thank um, everyone who continues to work with the Carnival Foundation to stage this grand event every year. We are very, very proud of the history. Mm. We are very proud of the shoulders we stand on um, in Carnival because Carnival has a very proud history in St. Martin. And we look forward again for 2024 and having a grand old time in Carmel Village and uh, to showcase the best of St. Martin to the rest of the world. Well, Mr. Granger, I want to thank you for coming. Wish thank you for success. having me. And convey my congratulations uh, to all of your members. All thank right? you very much. And continue the great job. Thanks, Earl. And that's it for now. See you next time on Hot 99.9 .9 FM Radio, Facebook, and YouTube. Take care. Bye.